Sophie Buxton. And I'm Lucy Campbell. Live at five, this is the hour. Coming up on today's show. from Will Jordan as he completes a 24-hour game and marathon for charity. Harry tells us how to make the most of a weekend here in Manchester. And we are put to the test with an outfit challenge. And we welcome celebrity guest Maraid from Channel 4, The Circle, into the studios. Hi there, girls. But first, let's take a look back at last week's episode, just from another angle. Here's a behind-the-scenes look at the hour.
joining us now we have Maraid, who starred in the Circle Channel's Ford newest reality series. Before we have a chat, let's remind ourselves of Maraid's best moments from her time on the show. Thanks for coming into the studio, Maraid. No it's problem. great to have you here. Thanks for having me. I think I need to steal some of your flirting techniques, you know. I don't think you'd be very successful if you used any of my <laughs> techniques. I need to steal a few as well. They weren't really flirting techniques. At the end of the day, I was just kind of having fun. I mean, I was 57 in there. The chap, I think Dan was 24, 25, wasn't he? He was. And, um, you know, like some people have been saying, oh, they were flirting techniques. I was just throwing about some outrageous comments. Had I flirted with him genu genuinely, it would have seemed very distasteful to me. I've got boys older than him. Right. So I just kind of wanted to make it so mad and so outrageous. It made me laugh, if nothing else. Of course. Oh, why yeah. not? Go Can yeah. you remind us of the age that you were playing? I was 32. That was the age I was playing, yeah. And if okay. you don't mind me asking, what's your real age? 57. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So, and he was 24, although I thought he was older than he was. Because when I went in, obviously, being a catfish, mm -hmm. I assumed everyone was a catfish or kind of I was suspicious of everybody. And I was looking for the flaws and everything. Yeah, yeah. So I, if you see Dan's profile picture, he actually looks a lot older. I actually said that to him when I met him. Oh, really? Uh, so I thought he was probably about 45. So I thought the jokes that I was throwing his way, me, he, he would understand, he would yeah, understand them a bit more. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Yeah. Um, can you tell me the reason why you entered the circle in the first place? It was such a unique social experiment to get involved with, wasn't it? And I was so lucky because being so much older than all the other contestants, um, it, was in, it was an incredible opportunity that was offered to me and I just couldn't resist it, really. Yeah, I mean, it was challenging. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you go, you hear about people going on TV shows and they go, oh, it's really intense. And you think, don't be so bloody ridiculous. Crack on and get on with it. It really is intense. Really? Yeah. yeah. Long hours but, of filming. Uh, just not long. It was just a whole process from start to finish. It, it's, it, we were going into something that was so different, so unique. Um, you couldn't anticipate how it would go and how, how you'd feel about it. Mm -hmm. And having the cameras on you 24-7, etc., etc. yeah. It's pretty hard work, but it was really yeah. good fun. But do you know what? You look so natural on there. I want to know, well, me, me and Soph are both so interested. Is this your first time on national television? Yeah. Have you done it before? Yeah. Or? No, never, never. It's your yeah. first time? Never done any and TV before. And how did you before. find it? Were you nervous? Or? No, not at all. don't no, get nervous at anything. <laughs> I actually don't. No, I don't ever get nervous for anything. I'm just kind of that kind of person. Just let it... Look, if you make a fool of yourself, and some people may think I did make a fool of myself, I got blasted on Twitter, um, just yeah. so what? Of you know, course, you be brave, be out there, have a laugh, have fun, you know. Exactly, and I actually do think you're very brave with the photos you chose. Where did you get those from? Okay, so I did cho cho chose them out of many that were offered to me. Um, there was some concern, people were thinking, oh, did I just pick them randomly? No, mm -hmm. I didn't. Um, Channel 4, Studio Lambert found me a whole host of people wow. to choose from, <sighs> and I chose her. And did above. you have to get permission off her? I would imagine so. Right. I've never met the girl, I don't know who Gosh. she is. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Have you had any contact with the girl? No she, contact, no. no, no, no. Better, though, no. Do you think she'll know that's what... Oh, she's, she knows what she signed up for. I'm pretty, pretty sure she did. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But, no, they would have got a licence to use them. I don't know I don't know the procedure. I don't, there would have been a whole lot of red tape that they had to go through. So that, that lady would have been aware mm -hmm. I was using yeah. those pictures. And, yeah. and you mentioned social media. What's the reaction been like on social media for you? Well, I was trending every night. I was Ooh. in there, apparently, <laughs> yeah. Love a bit like, of that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, I didn't even <laughs> bloody know what trending meant. I was trending above Robbie Williams, apparently, oh, an X joking. Factor. I swear to God, Fame yeah, I was. Impressive. Like, I know. But <laughs> trending for all the wrong reasons, because all these trolls are, like, having a go about me. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, since it's been out, I kind of... I wasn't really social media savvy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, I've... You guys are all immersed in the social media world, aren't you? And well, I was on... Yeah, <laughs> I was on Facebook a little bit, and that was pretty much it. I didn't have an Instagram, didn't have a Twitter. So it was all new to me. So when I came out, when I first looked at how Twitter rea reacted, I was a bit shocked. It took me about mm -hmm. half an hour yeah, to kind of, of really grasp it and think, my gosh, do people really spend time trying to be cruel? Because mm -hmm. that was never my intention, was to cause offence or anything. Mm -hmm. Or just like say, that's just my human having fun. And anyone who knows me was saying, wow, Maraid, you're bob on, you're just hilarious. But... I didn't realise the power of social media. Mm, so, in fact, powerful. this whole experiment, social experiment, it just showed it in so many different ways, There's so many layers to social media. Yeah. You can use it so positively, but it can turn... A positive thing can turn so negatively. Just Things spread so quickly, don't they? Spread so quickly and just grow legs and one thing and another, Did yeah. Did you keep updated in terms of, like... Did you look on Twitter and see what the abuse you were getting or did you just switch off from we, it? In t when we were in the circle? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no. So the minute we go into hiding, mm -hmm. we give up our phones. <gasps> we give up absolutely everything. We've got no contact with nothing or no one. How long did you have your phone for then? 
about three and a half weeks. <gasps> and oh my gosh. How did you find that? <laughs> I couldn't do that, that so Do you know what? Um, <laughs> <Snow's red. laughs> well, you guys probably can't, but I kind of thought, thought it's a bit of a luxury that people can yeah. get hold of me. So, yeah, because <laughs> I. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, so you give up everything. So you have no idea. When you come out, you go into hiding for a little while after as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, do you? So, yeah, so um, obviously because you're still aired or there's still be bits going on in the media about you, so you're going to hide so how, for a couple how, of days. How, just for a couple yeah, of days, Yeah, that is. yeah, okay. So And then you don't get your phone back until your final... So, so whatever's been pre played on TV, so you have the final words about you has been played, mm -hmm. then you'll get your phone back. Gosh. So it's only after the whole public had seen it. And that was a really weird thing because when I was in the show or even waiting in hiding to go into the show, I knew nothing about the show until I actually start so, to be part of it. So, right. so you say you don't know anything about the show, you didn't know anything about the yeah. show. How did you end up being on the show then? What well, was that process? Well, the studio at Lambert had got in touch with me. Mm -hmm. One of the casting directors got in touch with me because previously to... Um, did you apply through that or...? No, well, I, I did then they suggested I do make an application, which I did online, but I'd previously been found by the studio to, to do some goggle to do goggle box. Yeah. So, ah, yeah. fantastic. Uh, and that didn't work out well for whatever reason. Well, they did say last January, it's just January actually, still in 2018. Yeah. Um, they just said that we've got something in the future that I think Gosh. might work better for you. So that's how they really? found me and they got in touch and asked me if I'd like to apply. And so I just okay. did the application. And was it quite a long process? And No, not terribly long. Quite intense again. Like you're going down to London. Obviously, you go through, um, even though they invited me to apply, that wasn't a definite that was going to go. Mm -hmm. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people applied for this. It was so unique. It was so amazing. And it's so kind of current as well with social media. So... Um, You'd go down and do your um, filming and do your rehearsals or, or audition. Sorry, not rehearsals, audition. What did you and have then... to do for your audition? Uh, well, they talked to you for hours and hours on camera. Really? Yeah, but yeah. you didn't struggle there, did you? No, I don't. I never <laughs> no, I never shut up. They were like, please, we only had two hours to do it. It's four hours later, mate. Shut up. Good really? mistake. No. Do you know what I found really interesting? You said um, something when I think it was when you in there. You mentioned when you became fifty-seven, you almost became invisible. Yeah. Why I did. is that? Okay, so when I was younger, like I used to go out quite a lot and stuff, and I live in a small village, Alderley Edge, which is quite a glamorous little. No village. way! I do. Alderley Edge is just up the road from me. I'm in Sutton. So. Okay, hey, look at so that. We're all nice neighbours. <laughs> um, so you know, you'd go out in the evening and you'd turn heads, or people would kind of look at you and say hi or whatever. Now I know a lot of people in Alderley, so yeah. you know those people will still say hi. Don't get me wrong; they're not ignoring me. But you know, I'm single. I've been single for eight years, and you'd go out and let you be at a bar and do have you a glass spend a lot of wine. Time in the bubble room. Yes, my favourite place. <laughs> See, I don't know what the bubble yeah. room yeah, is. It's amazing. <laughs> I recommend everyone Lovely goes there. If you want to know what to do in Oldley, go to the bubble room. It's the best pate in the world. <laughs> but I'd be there at the bar, literally, girls, and it's going to happen to you. I hope it doesn't, but it may do. So I'd be there at the bar and I'd be having a glass of wine or champagne or whatever I could afford on the day. And some guy would be waving or smiling and I'd be thinking, hi, how are you? Smiling, waving back. And he's literally pushing me out the way to see the girl behind me that's 30 odd. Oh, and, li no. you know, you think, oh, no, no one's looking anymore. Well, so, Marid, I think you're fab. Thank yeah. you. You're looking fab for Well, 57. I don't kind of, I love being 57. I wasn't trying you to be 32. Amazing. I just thought, yeah, you do get a little bit invisible. Can I ask how... Um, Dan reacted when he first saw you in person. Okay, so when I walked into yeah, the room, how, just he, he said, the whole process. "Give me a big hug." Did oh, he? Yeah, did he? Yeah, he did. So he's a lovely gentleman. He's an absolutely he gorgeous lovely guy. Gentleman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were saying that. So um, yeah, so, so he we wasn't just sat really down. that annoyed with you. No, for being no. Acknowledged. I mean, I, there was obviously there's a lot of things he was saying. Here he is. Well. Oh, here's Dan. Hey, you. Oh, hi, Dan. Lovely how are you Dan. Doing? He's a super, super gentleman. Um, Sorry, what were you saying? So he wasn't annoyed. I mean, he hadn't yeah. invested. He hadn't vested any kind of emotion into. Our chats. It was just silly banter, you know what I mean? Of um, you know, the date we went on, the public shows at, and it was just silly fun. Yeah. And he was coming back with silly fun things as well. Yeah. So, no, there was nothing invested. So he wasn't hurt or, you know, in fact, Good. he did tell me a story. And when have I was you, have you kept in touch with Dan or not? With all, everybody, yeah. With everyone. Yeah, it's really oh, quite unique because we did the live final and obviously we hadn't met these people, but there was just something that kind of bonded us together. It was really very strange. Aww. Um, strong personalities, probably, uh, yeah. going through such a unique thing together. So, yeah, I've kept in touch with all of them. We did the live final, and then, of course, we did the screening of the Uncovered show. Mm -hmm. So we had a wrap party that night, so that was a bit of fun. Can I have a final question? Go on. Is there anything that Channel 4 didn't show that happened? Any juicy gossip or anything? Go on, you can Go tell on. us. <laughs> <laughs> no juicy gossip oh. that I can give away. I'll tell you what... Oh. She's Tell thinking. you, Freddie. No, I'm not thinking, but <laughs> Freddie was great fun. Uh, I know you guys all saw that crazy Freddie, yeah. mm -hmm. but let me tell you, that guy is fantastic and he is crazy and I hope he has a great career in mm -hmm. TV because 
actually in the circle itself, when you had the group chats, mm -hmm. he really kept the mood up. He was mm -hmm. really... So what you saw with Freddie from the public yeah. is mm -hmm. exactly what the essence of Freddie that we got well, on the good. chat. So I'm, I'm, I'm so going to cut in. I'm going to cut in. So <laughs> Were you happy with the winner? One last question. Yes or no? Uh, yes, because yes. I've catfished Brilliant. and I know how difficult that must have been for Alex. There yeah, you go. It's really, really hard trying to be someone yeah, else. Thank Definitely. you so, so no much No problem. It's lovely to come here. Nice to meet you guys as well. Yeah. And we're just going to see the rest of your time on the show now with oh, Dan. I hope it's nice, <laughs> Now, Will Jordan has pulled off a massive feat competing a 24-hour gaming marathon all in the name of Macmillan Cancer Research. Hmm. You might recognise me. I am Will Jordan and I just completed a 24-hour gaming marathon for Macmillan Cancer Support. And I'm here to tell you guys how you can do it as well. First, I thought it might have been a bit of a daunting task, I wasn't quite sure what it would entail, but when I started doing the reading up on it, I found out it was actually pretty simple. Um, essentially what you have to do is you need to set up a Just Giving page uh, where people can then donate the money to you. Uh, don't worry, it's not a, a massive thing that you'll have to do, you don't really have had to have created a web page before. Uh, all you simply need to do is just follow the links that you're given when you sign up and then uh, the event itself, uh, the Gaming Hero event itself will basically um, do most of the hard work for you. So once you have that set up, don't worry about um, having to know where to give the money to and who to give the money to. When people donate uh, to your Just Giving page, it'll go straight to McMillan. So that was uh, a, relief, a relief for me, I know for definite. In terms of how you can raise awareness for your Just Giving page so that you can raise as much money as you can, uh, I managed to raise about £100 uh, for the cause. Uh, you can do what I did, you can uh, share it on your social media accounts, uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, whatever you've got, um, spread a bit of word of mouth about the whole thing, get as many people uh, knowing about the event as possible, uh, maybe try the different things that Macmillan themselves have suggested that you do, like trying to get in some maybe funny forfeits to do and that kind of thing. Uh, definitely have something to reel in your audience, will make sure that you secure as big an audience uh, as you possibly can. Some people might even choose to stream it, uh, I couldn't because I didn't have a, a microphone to do it, uh, but I did make sure to take lots of pictures and update people on uh, what was happening uh, as I did it. But if you have the equipment then you can go ahead and stream it. Uh, there's, um, there's also uh, some instructions uh, on the Macmillan uh, Game Heroes page uh, to let you know how you can do that and so people can get to see what you're doing as you're doing it, which is pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, I'd say it's if you're into video games, it's definitely something that you should do, you know, doing what you love for uh, admittedly a very long period of time, but for uh, a very good cause. The people of Macmillan um, definitely need this money uh, and would definitely appreciate it. Um, and if you're worried about it being a massive thing to commit to, it's really not that bad. You know, once you just follow all the instructions that you're given, have a little look into it, you find out just how very simple and easy it is to do it. So I would definitely recommend that you guys do that. Uh, if you want to sign up for the event, if you're interested, then just go to this website down here and uh, yeah, I say go for it. I played Resident Evil 7 and Resident Evil 4 and had an absolute blast the whole way through. It was an honour and a privilege to be able to do it uh, for such a worthy cause. So there's no better time than now to get in the game. Joining us now is our event specialist, Harry. What have you got for us today? Uh, so this weekend there's a lot of events lined up um, in Manchester. On Friday night there's an Illuminati um, event, like a festival, um, where it's basically um, architects are coming in and sort of lighting up the rooms, making like special effects. It's, it all sounds quite cool. Oh, that's cool. Um, are you yeah. attending that event yourself? Uh, I might. I might try to get tickets, um, but apparently they are uh, running out fast. Oh, um, so you need to have tickets for it. So yeah, you do need to get right, need to okay. get tickets. Right. Okay. And where in Manchester is it held? Do you know what now? Um, it's at the BEC Arena. BEC oh, okay. Arena in Manchester. I've never been. No, I don't I think, think I've ever been have. there. No. no have um, you been yourself? I don't know. I haven't. No, no. I'm new to Manchester myself. Oh, so, where are you yeah. from? I'm um, from Worcester. Oh, um, lovely. In the Midlands, yeah. So just exploring Manchester. So just get mm -hmm. to know Manchester a bit. So that's yeah. on at the weekend? Yeah, that's Friday night. Friday? Friday night. Is yeah. there anything else? Saturday, um, so, yeah, Saturday, um, Salford City are playing um, a match in the National Conference mm. against Alsby United. Football. 
football. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not our strongest point. Not really. No. But carry but, on. Yeah. <laughs> <We're interested. laughs> um, well, they're actually 15 games unbeaten. Uh, Are they really? So they're looking to extend Go that. Go Salford. One Salford. Extend that run. Yeah. Fingers crossed for them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's on Saturday. Also on Saturday, there's a uh, event called Glow in the Park, oh. um, where basically it's for like family and uh, children, okay. um, sort of anyone really. But basically, it's uh, at night time, uh, 5k run uh, in the dark. But they've got. <laughs> God, I try my best. I can't promise. <laughs> <laughs> she gets up the stairs here and she's out of breath. So I'm so tired by the third floor. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, so that's 5k. That's 5k run. Mm -hmm. um, yes, yeah, so there's like um, they're brightening it up, so they're using like glow um, effects um, and also like marshmallows for uh, different points along the way. Oh, uh, marshmallows. Uh, yeah, oh, using marshmallows yeah, for like, like directions and stuff. Which park is it? Do you know? Um, no, I'm not sure, but. Um, I know that it's sort of all around like Manchester city centre. So, mm -hmm. nice. um, so if you need yeah. Salford, it might be a good idea to go and students see some new areas. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, it's a great opportunity to see some areas. Uh, ah, we're just yeah. hearing it's at Heaton Park. It's at Heaton Park. Heaton yeah, Park. Oh, right. I heard yeah. It. yeah. Mm -hmm. They do okay. a big bonfire night there as well, actually, in a few weeks. Oh, that coming up, on it? So mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I heard about that. Yeah, yeah. Did you? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, fantastic. Well, anything else? Um, on Sunday, there's a. Um, like a run sponsored by um, Children in Need. Uh, ah, oh, so, okay. yeah, there's, it's just a sponsored run. Um, Do you know how long it is? Or? Um, I think it's 10K, but I'm not 100 God, you sure. definitely won't be able I to definitely say won't. <laughs> <laughs> no chance you won't, you won't see me there. <laughs> <laughs> Are you even running yourself? Um, you I, I used to be into running, yeah. I used to do like cross country running. Oh. Oh, um, fantastic. Amazing. So you yeah. could attend them, wouldn't you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> could do, yeah. <laughs> um, mm. Yeah, and then on Sunday uh, evening, there's another festival um, in Manchester City Centre as well, so that's, that's another thing. Okay. That um, do you attend many events? If so, have you got a favourite that you've been to? Um, I, I don't attend many events, but um, I've, gone, I've gone to a few uh, concerts before. Um, and Who's I'd your favourite artist? Ooh, favourite artist. Um, that's a tough question. <laughs> we'll put them on the spot. I, I like. Uh, <laughs> I, I really like um, Imagine Dragons. Ah, oh, okay. cool. Um, I'm uh, also big into sort of um, I don't know, a lot of other rock music. So. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So, what's your taste in music? Oh, you see, since going to Glastonbury, I really like the 1920s. Oh, you've been to Glastonbury? Yeah. Oh, oh, you just dropped that one, didn't you? <laughs> I mean, I haven't got tickets so far this year. The sold out. Fingers crossed in the resale, because the first year I went, I got them in the resale, so. Uh -huh. Fingers crossed for me. When does that, that come out? When is it? Um, a few weeks' time. Oh no, actually, I think it's it's next year now. March time, I think the resale. Because they missed a year last year. They didn't did. They, they did mm -hmm. for to let the ground settle and everything. Yeah. So uh -huh. we're to out of that this year. Oh, <laughs> of course you did. Of course you did. Are you a festival girl? Hmm? Pardon? Are you a festival girl? Yeah, do you know what? I've been through um, t to a couple of them, um, but that's all we've got time for. I'm okay. so sorry. Thank <laughs> no you worries. so, so much, Harry. It's all right. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Harry. Now, no. Dan, stay there, Harry. Don't worry. Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to get to you just yet. <laughs> now, Dan Finch has gone around the University of Salford's Peel Park campus just to see how smart the students really are. I'm here at Pill Park to find out how smart the students of the University of Salford really are. I'm going to be asking them three very not that simple questions to see what they say. So, what are your names? My name's Lucy. I'm Leah. I'm Fern. My name's Ellen. Matt. Brandon. Uh, Will. Fatima. Ed. Ewan. Darcy. Jamie. He said hi. He wants to be in it. He's in it now. He's in it now. And what are you studying, Matt? Uh, media production. Television and radio. We're all doing theatre yeah, and performance. We love an actor. <laughs> I'm doing business management with sport. Fashion design. Ooh, different. We haven't had anyone from fashion design yet. Right at the top. Mm. Having a lovely time. Computer science. Software engineering. See, some very smart people. <laughs> but how smart are you? <laughs> I'll just smack myself in the face with the mic. <laughs> 
<laughs> right, guys, I've got three uh, simple-ish questions for you. I'm going to see how you do. OK, can one of you just clap really loudly into the microphone for me? Oh, my God, that was so in sync. So, number one. If a plane crashes on the border between the United States and Canada, where do they bury the survivors? Uh, there is a right or wrong answer, isn't there? There is a right or wrong answer. Yeah. Well, I think it'd be nicer to have it in Canada. United States. Why? I don't know. <laughs> what about you? Yeah, I have the same answer. Canada. Close. Um, <laughs> they're actually survivors, so they're not buried. Right. They're survivors. He's brilliant. So what's I recorded in the last... Them lot? Yeah. Okay, cool. Just check him. Okay. So, some mumps have 31 days... Don't look at the answer. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> uh, some mumps have 31 days. Others have 30. How many have 28? One, but only every four years. Um, one? One. None. None? Do you want me to say one? <laughs> Just so it makes it a bit more interesting. <laughs> I'm leaving that in. <laughs> one. Well, actually, they all have 28 days. <laughs> He's off. He's off. He's off. All of like... them. They've got it. Are you trying to get yourself some plants? Yeah, I was just going to look at some cactuses. <gasps> oh, my God, no. Can we actually show these cactus? I'm not being funny. You have to show these cactus. That. <laughs> Matt, get out of the way. <laughs> Look at that! That's so cute! Right, are you ready for your question? Yeah. OK, so, Miss John's bungalow is decorated completely pink. What colour are the stairs? Pink. 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 Decorated oh, completely it's pink. It's a bungalow, isn't it? So you don't have stairs. <laughs> He's having a lovely time, isn't he? Bungalow's are like a one-storey house. Oh. So it's all one, one storey. Okay. So there's we no stairs. What were you going to say? Yeah, I, I need to know. know. I was... I was uh, Trying to figure out what you were saying. <laughs> Fair enough. Two out, two out of three. Two out of three, which is pretty good. I think the average is like zero. <laughs> That's good. So That's you're maybe, doing well. Maybe we'll make it. Yeah, maybe yeah. jump over to business. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. Yeah. Also, can I just say, we have to point this out, I literally love this coat and this jacket. Oh uh, right, so we have um, asked the questions and found out that actually the smartest course here at the University of Salford is the fashion course. Who would have thought? I'm going to go to bed now because I'm cold and tired, so I will see you later. I've also got to edit all of this. This is going to be so much effort. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Others have 30s. Matt, let me finish the question. <laughs> oh, that, that's mean. That's just mean. <laughs> Let's head over to Lucy now for the fashion. Hi, guys. Right, so first up, we have the lovely Dan, or Sassy Dan, as I like to call him. <laughs> uh, sporting, a very sporty number. Wow. Now, Dan, wow. look at that, Can Dan. I ask you, where did you get that wonderful jacket me. from, and how much is it? Bershka. It's like... £30? Mm. Now, guys, how much? Can you repeat what you said? Mm. I can't. Um, Bershka. So it's from, from Bershka. Bershka. Yeah, and Bershka? it's about £30. About £30. Pounds. OK. OK. Very oh, good deal. It, it does look a bit Tommy Hilfiger, that does, the colours. Yeah. You know, from a distance. Mm. I'm getting them I vibes like as well, it. so yeah. very nice. <laughs> now, guys, I'm going to ask you a big question. Oh. How much do you think the whole outfit was the just whole a bit of fun. Oh, the think whole it was? outfit. Let's, um, right, so we've got fans. Okay. We've got, um, nice. Are these dungarees? They are can we dungarees. can we see what half up? Just you know. A bit of half up. Oh yeah, yeah, come on. Oh. Come on, let's give see what you've got. Pop that off for you. Go on, give him a twirl. <gasps> oh, oh okay. here we go. Here we go. He means business now. <laughs> I like it. I really like it. Oh, and we could Actually, go for one strap oh, up and one strap around, skin? just so we can see the Tommy <laughs> emblem on the other side. Well, there we are. Honestly, <laughs> get that branding. Oh, I like that. See, oh, like wear it half up, half down. Yeah. Very yeah. nice. Very nice. Shabby can chic. We give us a little twirl so I can see the cat. I've got you. Thanks, <laughs> Dan. <laughs> oh, 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 You've done that before, Dan. <laughs> 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 Very nice. Right, OK. So we're going for the whole outfit. How much the whole outfits were? What do you think? Um, right, oh. I'm going to say £100. I don't know. <sighs> what, what we feeling? Oh. I'm saying maybe... <laughs> Oh, am I talking to you? Oh, no? Oh, I thought we did the whole one. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so, oh. Maybe about 70 for the shoes. Okay. Um, 30, 
35 for the dungarees. Okay, I'm trying to get me maths Tommy on Tommy Top, now. that's about 45, 50. Mm -hmm. He said 30. I hope you're adding this up because I'm trying my best. <laughs> 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 I just drawn it up. 30 me. pounds for the jacket, you said. I'm saying the cap, maybe 20. So what's that? Dan, <laughs> should we, we say about reveal? should we say about two hundred and fifty pounds? Two hundred and fifty. Yeah. I, I was way yeah. out of close, it. Come on, close. I would never spend two hundred and fifty pounds. One hundred and seventy-five. Wow, you were close. Okay. Very close. Yeah, Good guess. I got mine completely That's, wrong. Yeah, Dan mm. likes his quality. No idea. Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Who does your shop? Dan, do you want to go and take a seat? I'll bring the next person. Thanks, Dan. Dan. So <laughs> next up, we have Amelia. Hello, who Amelia. Is studying fashion here at university. Lovely. What year were you, Amelia? First year. First, First year. year. You enjoy it? Yeah. Good. Now she's sporting, I noticed these before, some very cool pants <laughs> from ASOS. They are jazzy. Would you call Can them flares? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're more wide leg than flares. Yeah. They're gorgeous. Look at that check. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> well, come on. I really don't mean to take offence. <laughs> oh, no. But they look like my uh, Jack Wills pyjamas. <laughs> <laughs> which are so comfy. Yeah, literally. And you know what? You really pull them off. Do you know I what, though? If they're as comfortable as pyjamas, go for it. Yeah, yeah. Go exactly. for it. Go for it. Like it. Really like it. Now, how much do you think Amelia paid for her Can outfit? Can you have a twirl? Can you give us a little nice? Right, so we've got a mesh spotty top. Yeah? Mm -hmm. um, a little leopard. Leopard skin. Um, oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> got the bangle um, and the boots. Um, okay, what, what are we going for? Rough, I'm yes. going to go 150. Close, close. You Very see, close. Oh, look at those shoes. I love those. I really like those. <laughs> <laughs> um, how much? Uh, how much? 110. 110. Ooh. 110. Ooh. See, I was going. Nice. What did you say? It, what, what, what were the shoes going? Uh, 70s. 70. Right. <sighs> what what nice. brand are they? Can you look they? your shoe up so we can see? Oh, you're not your so shoe. Have a little look. <gasps> nice. Ooh. Are they comfy? Yeah. Yeah, they look quite sturdy called? as Bagabons? well. Vagabonds? Vagabonds. Ooh. I've got some um, boots from there as well. I'm, I am loving this. <laughs> it's great, isn't Fantastic. it? Fantastic. You look fab. Cool. You do look Thank great. You. Thanks. Rocking it. Rocking it. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks, Amelia. Thank you. Right. And next up, we have the. Lovely oh, Nadia, oh, yeah. who is sporting some Hello. very cool shoes, can wow. I say? Look at those trainers. Oh, gosh, I need my sunglasses. <laughs> they are vibrant. I'm loving them. Can we come forward a bit and then we can just check you out? Ooh, nice. <laughs> I've never seen such jazzy converse. Like, they're incredible. And they're so clean. Are they new? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like this. Let's so. see how long they last. <laughs> are they really? actual converse, though? Are they the yeah, con they yeah. Come ahead. on, can you not see these? I know, I know, I've got my glasses on as well. Yeah. <laughs> Um, can we have a little, a little twirl? Yeah, just a little twirl. Go on, yeah. Oh, we've got a tail on there. You know what? Black that's tip. just. I think black's such a bold colour. It is. You can't and go it's wrong. It's such a can statement, you? isn't it? And when you wear shoes that vibrant, it just. There's. Do you have a black denim jacket? I'm not that cool. Of course oh, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got one, and I think they just go with everything. So they I think it's, it's a staple in the wardrobe. Mm. And is that I'm called a it. turtleneck? The yeah. Turtleneck. Mm. I really like that. And the necklace like as well. That's is that got a little stone in or? Yeah, my grandma made it for me. Oh, how oh, lovely! Wow. Can you, let's have a look. It's Aggie. <gasps> oh, oh, gorgeous! Like oh! <laughs> 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 right. Oh, okay. Really nice now, outfit. how much do you think this outfit is worth? So the jacket in Topshop, you spend about. Oh, hang pounds. on, hang on! I'm spying some it. What are you saying? Is, is, oh, is, is, oh, that, is oh, that Levi? Levi. Oh, <laughs> that's game changing. You know, your game labels, changing. you know your labels. That changes the game. I can see you were going like that. I was oh, oh, like that. Like that. that was a sus up. I mean, are they Levi jeans as well? Yeah. Uh, no, these jeans are not Levi. Where, Where are they, they from? Topshop? Uh, Topshop. Joni? Primark. Primark! Primark. Do you know what? You can't tell the difference between Primark and uh, no, Topshop, can you? Got, I can't tell Apart from the price. from Primark. Are they good quality jeans? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I have to swear them then. <laughs> yeah, they do their job. They yeah, do their job. The I think they're great. That's right. That's so it's a staple, right, okay. Mm. Staple. Primani, there staple, we go. Staple, staple, one of them. So we've got uh, a few more people. So next we have Grace. We didn't, we didn't guess it. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Oh, oh, we did do the price. We did it quickly, right. We did do the price. So right, I'm going to say 100, £150. Pound. £150. Uh, how much are they? £120-ish. £120 oh, for the whole outfit. Right. 
Okay. She's not oh, oh, not bad at all. Bad. Oh, the rings. The rings, sort of, right. right. Okay. Next up, so we have 120 for an amazing outfit. For the whole outfit, outfit our guest 150. Amazing. amazing. Yeah. Great. It wasn't far off. Thank you there very much. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we have Grace, uh, who's looking very cool, rather Ooh. sporty. Oh, wow. Look at this like camo. Sport chic. Look at you. Fantastic. I right, like okay. It. So, what we got? We've got the puffer. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us where it's from? Boohoo. Boohoo. Boohoo.com. Boohoo.com. Boo <laughs> <laughs> that was so insane. <laughs> <laughs> you two are made for this. <laughs> Love it, eh? Honestly. Definitely. Uh, so, Grace, oh, right. do you want to tell them a bit more about your outfit, where you got certain items from? Well, um, like I said, mm -hmm. the stuff is from Boohoo. Lovely. Yeah. Another primer. You know what? They look like the gym short leggings they that I've got. Though. They look really good quality. I like those. They're a lovely yeah. fit as well. Yeah. They're comfy, you see. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And Ooh. those snazzy, gorgeous, <gasps> glittery shoes. Where are they from? They also look new. <laughs> you know what? They're like a few months old. <gasps> Taking care of them all. Yeah, you really are. <laughs> So, no. so you've been taking good care of them because yeah, we can I see. Really like them for my favorite pair, so They're your favorite pair. Oh, where fantastic. are they from? Um. I can't remember. I'd like to say it was Boohoo as well. Boohoo so you think well. it's Boohoo as well? Gosh, yeah, Boohoo's doing well. Different pairs. They're both from different shops. Yeah. Right. Similar, so Fair yeah, enough. And the top. Similar. Did we talk about the top? Have I missed the top? No, no, no. Where's the top from? This is from Crush. Which is a really Could you just hold that a little bit up? Yeah, sure. We've got you. We've got you. Yeah. You know what? Instagram's really good at discovering new clothing brands, isn't it? To the guest. Microphone to the guest so we can hear your lovely yeah. voice. <laughs> there we go. That's a bit better, isn't it? This bloody yeah, microphone is causing problems. We're having a bit of hassle with this. I think mic, we're having a few technical, technical difficulties, yeah. but not we'll plough on through. So let me ask Gallery's you. Gallery's not very happy with the light. It's not their fault. No. <laughs> the microphone is broken, I'm just saying. Um, how much do you think this whole outfit is worth? Well, Gosh. you see. Quite a lot of Boohoo and Primark, and then I know, but yeah, true. Right, are we going to go for lower then? Yeah, I think so. Well, you know, I think we'll higher. be surprised. Ooh. Lower, higher. Um, I'd say maybe like I'm going to go for ninety. Okay, eighty-five. Eighty-five, right? Five pounds in it. Who's yeah. going to win? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> You're <laughs> yeah I know. Uh, the closest. Come and on, then let's go. Eighty. Oh, oh close. Tees on you. So that's our cheapest outfit so far, so thank you very much. Do you... So finally we have Hannah. Hannah, do you want to come on up? Now this Hi, is Hannah. an interesting outfit. She's actually designed her top herself. <gasps> Hannah, wow, do you want to tell wow. us a bit more about your outfit and why it's so interesting? Um, these are like tights and I cut the middle. How You're does joking. that work? <laughs> so, like, They're tight? Yeah, so the sleeves are the legs. The sleeves are the legs and yeah. Just oh my gosh! <laughs> cool, That's go. incredible. I've never seen somebody be so <laughs> adventurous with a pair of tights. Creative. That's so creative. <laughs> Your arms are the legs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Basically, it took me a while to figure out the whole. Could, could you just see your like, Yeah. Your Do you want to take yeah? the jacket off just yeah? so oh, they okay. can see? I also twirl. the tattoos really add to it as well. I, think. I was just about to say, yeah, you, you can um, uh, you can see all the lovely tattoos. If you just come forward a little bit. They're, oh, nice. They're like the... Um, Gorgeous. What do you call them? Like army... What these are these? So, dickies. 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 Uh, I don't think I've heard I've of them. I've never heard of that term. Oh, Very cool, Where'd you get these from? Vintage place. Vintage. Lovely. And There's then you've got boots as well. And then. the jacket. Right, what are we thinking then? Yeah, what price, price guys, what do you think? I'm thinking, I don't know, I feel like you've tried to trick us out because you've got the... It's homemade. Dickie, yeah, it's, it's homemade, but then we've got boots, which are... And then we've got the jacket as well. Where's the jacket Can from? You, give us a spin. Vintage as well. Oh, that's vintage it's as well. It's all very vintage, isn't it? I okay. like it. Really like it. And is the are we including the jewellery in the price? Yeah. yeah. Just these ones, yeah. Just those, <laughs> okay. Do you know what I'm gonna throw out there? <laughs> I'm gonna say um sixty pounds. Can we hear can we hear go on? Go on, go on, go on. <laughs> Forty five? <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> 45. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think I just about 45. More. That's wow. so good. That's so good. Fantastic. Wow. I love that. It's one of my favourites. Really <laughs> What's your favourite vintage shop? Quickly. Uh, I haven't been in Manchester. I go Bryson. <gasps> You're missing out, yeah. honestly. Get to Thrift Shop, Piccadilly yeah. Gardens Corner, and miss <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, we Fantastic. <laughs> Ella is joining us now to discuss a very serious topic in today's society. It's been hitting the headlines recently with the removal of the phrase man size from Kleenex tissues. Ella, can you give us a little bit about 
Kleenex and what's been going on? So there was like loads of people campaigning about the fact that man size is not gender neutral enough. Um, okay. So they changed it. And I think that, I don't know what they've changed it to, but it's not man size anymore. And it's kind of hit the headlines in a more negative way because people are responding, kind of mocking feminism as a whole and being like, what, you know, why are you being so petty? That kind of thing. So do you think it's drawing away from the attention of the actual main definitely. problem? I don't, I definitely don't. I'm not out there advocating changing those kind of things, like um, the gentleman's dub sandwich, club sandwich. Wages, yeah, yeah, yeah. seen this as well. Yeah, that was, yeah. And I do think it's a bit ridiculous, but at the same time, I don't think mocking it and the amount of backlash it gets then on Twitter and in the news is justified. Like, surely, in order to carry on with the bigger things and uh, have more focus on that, you need to just let it go. Just, like, let it go instead of taking to Twitter and firing all these comments about feminists when really you, you don't know enough about the bigger things. Yeah, because I've seen it um, and it was basically a lady who said her son had seen this and he she was basically... He was four, wasn't he? Yeah, he yeah. was four yeah. years old and he said, um, Mummy, it says it's man size. does that mean I can't um, use, use it? it? <laughs> Which I thought was heartbreaking, but it shouldn't four have... as well. To yeah, I know, kind of four years old, so he was only tiny. Um, like, it, does, it does happen. I feel like people do... There are people out there who do take offence to that kind of thing, um, but I, that's why I think it's so important not to kind of take the mick and mock it like online, because you're just going to keep shaming the name of feminism and keep bringing it down in people's expectations. There's a lot of people out there who think that the definition of feminism is kind of women hating on men and like belittling men mm -hmm. and kind of not wanting to be equal, but wanting to be more than, but that's not the definition. Can and you that's, define feminine for us then? It's wanting uh, equality between the sexes. and Because okay, I feel like there's a lot of, you know, people aren't sure. Misinterpretations and yeah, that kind uh -huh. of thing. Definitely. People like people, don't people don't understand it, and it is misinterpreted massively because you do get the feminists that make the news are the extreme ones, just mm -hmm. like you get the extreme um, like terrorists that make the news. You don't hear about the normal people sitting in their lounge having a good chat, like putting the world to rights. You hear about the extreme stuff. Um, so you see extreme feminism in the news, and that's then what people think it is. And it's not like it is just equality between the sexes. It's also like stopping the oppression and discrimination against women, but it is just equality between the two. So would you say you are a feminist? Or yes. You, yes, okay. So do you know what defines, say, um, someone as being a feminist and what isn't? Is it, because you can have your own views, does that just make you a feminist if you have views on feminism? Or? You're, you're a feminist if you want equality between the sexes. Mm -hmm. I think that's just a name for it. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people out there who say, um, I want equality, but I'm not a feminist because, you know, I like men wolf whistling me or whatever and that's not that's not a part of it it's the the bigger issues so like uh, the gender pay gap um i think something like 130,000 girls last year missed school because they couldn't afford sanitary products it's some crazy, some girls that? don't even know visit. like what their period is mm -hmm. and because it's just not educated enough um there's oh, there's loads more facts like one in three women are at risk of getting assaulted or raped in their life one in three like that do the maths, like we're not equal mm -hmm. and there mm -hmm. is a long road to go and I think any body who says they want equality between the sexes is a feminist. Mm -hmm. Not the kind of, you know, men-hating ones, that's the extreme version, but just a normal kind of feminist. Mm -hmm. So what do you think the media can do to sort of get these um, larger problems out there? Put less of a kind of focus on the minor things and the petty things and focus more on the bigger changes and the things that need to improve and like pave the way for a better future for women mm -hmm. not kind of ev every single newspaper and every single twitter account kind of publishing the kleenex thing because they know that it's going to create a reaction and they know people are going to mock it and kind of they're going to get a reaction um so just not focusing that much on it just letting it go just being like okay you want that change it's done and focusing on the things that are important how do you think we can educate people more to have a better understanding of feminism and i think uh just talking is so important like i've met a lot of people who just don't have never really learned about it in schools or their you know their families haven't really talked about it and just having a chat with someone like i've chatted to you about it um and just informing people of what you know and letting them then form their own opinions and kind of making it more of a topic of discussion rather than something that people don't want to talk about because they don't mm. know anything about it. And do you think modern day fe feminism has gone too far? No, because feminism 
is feminism. I think there's always going to be uh, extreme versions of every kind of movement. Mm -hmm. And that is not what you need to focus on. You need to focus on the movement that is there for the right reasons. So I don't think modern day feminism is feminism. And then there's always going to be those people who take it that, you know, that little extra, that bit further, and then they make it on the news. But I don't think it's gone too far. I still think there's a long way to go. Mm -hmm, definitely. And I think there's so much the media and schools can do and even, even unis, everything can do, like societies and things which yeah. can make a change, which needs to make a change, definitely. And things like podcasts as well. What do you... Do you recommend people should listen to podcasts more? And if so, are yeah. there any that you enjoy listening to? Yeah, so I only discovered podcasts recently, believe it or not. Um, I was on the train and I was like, you know what? Train's the best place. The best place. Oh, it's oh, a podcast. podcast yeah. No, it's great. Um, and one that was recommended to me was The Guilty Feminist. And it's like, ah. they kind of open with, I'm a feminist, but like, I like a man wolf whistling at me. I'm a feminist, but can't think of any off the top of my head but you get the gist because you can still be a feminist and like this you know like certain things that maybe aren't considered straight edge feminism but it's a really good one and they do they were at the edinburgh fringe festival oh, so right. i listened to that one and they had loads of like comedians on it was like a live um podcast of the show it was really mm, funny okay. lots of funny women going on and kind of that free to listen to and you can yeah, yeah very okay. free the guilty feminist is the uh the receipts podcast that's a good one more like also talking about like women and sex and relationships and like mm -hmm. casual sex and stuff just like they're really good platforms to discuss things that um there's a stigma around like even though it's not a stigma around feminism there's a stigma around women being proud to be feminists mm -hmm. um so it's just it's just a good way to educate yourself and actually this is breaking news in the last hour that it is very relevant to the topic we have just debated um, women can now for the first time in history apply for any role in the british military according to the defense secretary gavin williamson what hey. are your thoughts on that Ella? Uh, well i hadn't heard it i think that's great <laughs> just, in. <laughs> just in hot off the press Live news. Would no, you I like to great. say this is a step forward for gender equality? Yeah, I think mm -hmm. everything like that is a step forward, and at that so that kind of thing needs to be celebrated and like talked about and shared online instead of people sharing the Kleenex story and being like, "Wow, this is great! I bet you're proud of yourself." That kind of thing. It's just mm -hmm. mocking, and it just brings a bad name to feminism rather than celebrating that kind of thing. Like, I bet there was way more. Uh, shares on the Kleenex story than there was that there's going to be on this because mm. people just like to take the mick. More yeah, it'll than be interesting like to, to see actually on social yeah, media how um, sort of top of the feed this is or if it's yeah. mentioned a lot because obviously it's even shared. Yeah, we'd all heard about the uh, Kleenex thing and even yeah. like a, a silly thing about Waitrose sandwiches. Like, <laughs> well, that's it's it. really, it's really I mean, not relevant. Food related, I yeah. straight away. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Did you experience anything on Twitter yourself through the Kleenex? debate did you speak to anybody or um yeah so my course mate owen we okay. had it wasn't an argument it was genuinely just a conversation mm -hmm. and it was it was quite in like insightful for me because i was making the point you know don't take the mick mm -hmm. it's not progressive at all for the feminist movement um and he was kind of very passionate about the fact that well you know don't take the achievements in those small things when there are so many more battles to be fought. And I agree, like there are, and there does need to be more focus on that. But my point was just not to, not to mock the things that are happening, the small mm -hmm. things that are happening, because there's obviously people out there who do get offended by it and who have campaigned for this. Like if people didn't care, it wouldn't have changed. This is a Kleenex tissue box. Like it's obviously a big thing to have happened, but just so kind of respect to, like, people. the Me Too movement? The Kleenex tissues? Yeah. No. no. <laughs> Clearance <laughs> tissues is just people get getting offended about it saying man size instead of, course, of like yeah. person sized. And now they're gonna call it something like extra large. Is that what they're gonna call yeah. it? I mm -hmm. think it is extra that's large. What, yeah, isn't it? that's what they're yeah. gonna Extra so. large tissues. What did you going back to the Me Too movement, what did you think that was like in the industry? In the movie like, industry. In the moving industry. Um very positive. Mm -hmm. I think social media, even though it does play a negative role in many ways. The whole Me Too movement was so powerful and it brought, it was definitely a step in the right direction. It brought a lot of women out from hiding, like feeling more powerful and like they could actually speak up and not be belittled by, by men or by the public or by newspapers because 
people in the film and industry were kind of being like, this is, this is enough and we're going to say something. And I think it was definitely, definitely a positive thing. And I think it should continue. I think it's died down a little bit in the public eye, but I think it's still there, mm -hmm. especially with the whole um, Brett Kavanaugh getting voted onto the Supreme Court and yeah. those women standing up and kind of saying it after he's going to, into like the most powerful role, one of the most powerful roles in the United States. And they had the confidence to do that. And I think maybe without the Me Too movement, they maybe wouldn't have had the confidence to have like stood up and publicly made their allegations. So I think, yeah, it played a big role in helping women to come to terms with any um, sexual assault they've experienced and mm -hmm. feel like they can talk to people about it because people will listen. 100% and they're not alone, are they? No. It's not so alone. interesting. You're so knowledgeable, Alan. It's, <laughs> it's, it's are, nice Alan. to see somebody so passionate, isn't it? Yeah, about fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. is. And obviously, like something like this, it's great to sort of get the message out there. Yeah, it needs to be talked about because yeah, otherwise, people aren't educated, and that's yeah. when things get out of hand. Just chat to your friends about it. I love a good chat. I wish I was I as passionate about friend. uni. Yeah. <laughs> a good friend called Ella that knows quite a lot about it. We live together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's good. It's yeah. educational. Yeah, it's informative. It's not about forcing your views on people. Mm -hmm. It's about discussing your views with people and saying, these are the facts that I found out. Like I, when I first kind of discovered, you know, this is what I want, this is what I'm passionate about. I, I didn't know any facts and I felt quite weak when I was like talking to people and arguing with people about it because I couldn't be like, well, this, this and this. And I think That's learning fantastic. them is really important. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. So thank you for coming in today, Ella. And a massive thank you to all our guests today. That's all we've got time for, but be sure to join in on the slightly earlier day of Wednesday the 1st of November at 5 o'clock. Thanks for watching the hour. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>